So CLL cells really need the microenvironment in order to grow and for the disease to progress. So it has become very clear during this year that many subpopulations in the microenvironment make a difference in terms of uh, uh, tumor progression. And we heard today at the microenvironment dedicated session of the IWCLL 2017 meeting from Dr. Martina Seifert that monocytes play a very clear cut role. She demonstrated that if you take out monocytes from a mouse, you have great difficulty in obtaining engraftment and progression of the disease. And Essentially, leukemic cells need secretion of uh, possibly soluble factors from monocytes. And what is becoming clear is that what starts the whole thing is leukemic cells themselves, which have genetic abnormalities that result in the um, uh, upregulation of transcription of programs that can modify the environment. Monocytes, but not only monocytes. I think T cells also play a very important role in this context, as it is, it is becoming very clear that without T cell support, the CLL cells do not graft. For example, you cannot transfer the disease in immunocompromised mice. NOTCH1 is the uh, single most recurrently mutated gene in CLL patients and it has been shown that the uh, representation of the mutations actually increases as the disease progresses. So about uh, uh, one patient in 10 will carry NOTCH1 mutations at diagnosis, but that increases to one in five when the disease becomes resistant to therapy and one in three in the, in the cases that transform into Richter's syndrome. So this is telling us that there is an oncogenic role for NOTCH1. And uh, in, in my lab, we have shown that NOTCH1 signaling is important in directing cells. So the way we see it now, cells that have a mutated NOTCH1 have got increased signaling that modifies their propensity to sense chemokines. So essentially, these leukemic cells are facilitated in homing to privileged niches, such as the lymph nodes or the bone marrow microenvironment. And supposedly, there they find the right uh, cocktail of antigen and accessory signaling signals that promote growth and possibly the acquisition of further mutations. That is why NOTCH1 signaling is, uh, uh, plays a very important role in leukemic cell uh, progression. Whether it can become a therapeutic target is still a matter of debate. Of course, uh, the, the oncogenic impact in CLL is nothing like what is seen in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, where these mutations are driving mutations and there are gamma secretase inhibitors uh, for these patients. So at this point, I'm not sure that uh, uh, we are ready for uh, gamma secretase-based uh, clinical trials, but we certainly do need to know more about notch signaling, not only in the leukemic cells, but also in the cells of the microbiome environment because it has become clear also from talks uh, during the today's sessions uh, at the meetings that notch one and notch two can be expressed by cells in the microenvironment and that signaling through notch receptor in these cells uh, can favor the acquisition again of uh, tumor friendly properties by the microenvironment itself. I think there have been studied mostly based on uh, patients that become flu uh, resistant to fludarabine-based uh, uh, chemoimmunotherapy regimens, so uh, FCR. Uh, and there have also been reports that not patients with not uh, mutations actually respond less well to anti-CD20 uh, based uh, therapy regimens. In general, if you look at Kaplan-Meier survival curves, uh, patients that have not mutations perform worse uh, from the th from the standpoint of time to first treatment and also from the standpoint of overall survival. Do we need clinical trials to ascertain this? I think the best bet would be the PD-1, PD-L1 system, which where we have already significant knowledge in solid tumors and also in other hematological malignancies. So probably the the the, the first trials will will uh, involve the use of PD-1, PD-L1 antibodies together with drugs that possibly target directly the leukemic cells. So I think that the best trials would be a combination of something that blocks leukemic cell proliferation or induces leukemic cell apoptosis 
precursors such as a BCL2 inhibitor or a BTK inhibitor together with drugs that make the environment unfriendly. So that uh, uh, make uh, T cells and myeloid cells uh, um, un unresponsive or uh, uh, unsupportive of, of tumor growth. One of them might be the PD-1, PD-L1 cyst and the other might be lenalidomide for which there is already significant experience and it has been used in clinical trials. So possibly the restoration of T cell uh, immune responses and immune competence uh, will be uh, uh, the first uh, uh, area that we will explore. Um, the monocyte uh, area that we heard a lot about today is, is probably a step behind in terms of the setup of clinical trials. Thank you.